Russia is withdrawing some of its troops from Ukraine in response to the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region. The Wall Street Journal writes about this, citing sources among American officials. It is noted that these actions indicate that the Ukrainian armed forces raid into the Kursk region has provoked a forced regrouping of Russian forces. The publication's interlocutors noted that the U.S. is still trying to determine the significance of this step by Russia and did not specify how many troops Russia is transferring from the Ukrainian front to Kursk. His assessment confirms the statements of Ukrainian officials that the surprise operation in the Kursk region diverted Russian troops from Ukraine. Meanwhile, Politico Europe also reported, citing an official in Kiev, that a relatively small number of Russian troops had been withdrawn to respond to the incursion into the Kursk region. U.S. officials told the magazine that it was still unclear how many troops Russia was pulling out of Ukraine. Against the backdrop of the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region, the Russian Federation has begun to withdraw units from Ukraine. In addition, the demilitarization of Kaliningrad has begun, reported Lithuanian National Defense Minister Lorinas Kasyunas. The minister added that the next good sign from the partners would be permission to use long-range weapons on the territory of the Russian Federation. He emphasized that his country is lobbying for this among Western countries. Earlier, the representative of the Ukrainian operational group of troops, Tavria Dmitro Lykova told that Russia withdrew a small part of the troops from the temporarily occupied regions of Zaporizhia and Kherson regions against the background of fighting in the Kursk region. Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, reported to President Volodymyr Zelensky that 74 settlements in the Kursk region are now under Ukrainian control. As Suspiln writes, the advance of Ukrainian troops in the territory of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation is complicated by resistance in the direction of the regional center. According to sources among the military participating in the Kursk operation, the defense forces will dig in at some borders. To try to counter Ukrainian gains, Russian troops have, however, continued their offensive on Pokrovsk and elsewhere in Ukraine's Donetsk region, according to the general staff of the Ukrainian army, in one of the hottest spots on the war front where Russia is gaining ground. As Ukraine captured territory, Russian commanders initially played down the assault, insisting the military had things under control. But more than a week later, Ukraine now controls at least 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory. Russia has prepared its fleet to launch nuclear-tipped missile strikes against targets in Europe. The Financial Times reports this, citing secret documents it has obtained. They say that the Russian fleet is trained to fire nuclear-tipped missiles at targets deep in Europe in the event of a potential conflict with NATO. Even before Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the military provided NATO officers with maps of likely targets, some as far away as the west coast of France and barrow in furnace in the UK. The documents show how Russia envisioned a conflict with the West and planned a series of overwhelming strikes against Western Europe. The secret documents, compiled between 2008 and 2014, include a list of targets for missiles that could carry both conventional warheads and tactical nuclear weapons. Russia has retained the ability to deploy nuclear weapons on surface ships, which experts say carry significant additional risks of escalation or accidents. The documents also note that the Navy's high maneuverability allows it to carry out sudden and preemptive strikes and massive missile strikes from multiple directions. Nuclear weapons are generally intended to be used in combination with other weapons to achieve Russia's goals, the documents say. The publication notes that the documents were provided by Western sources. Analysts who have reviewed them say the contents are consistent with how NATO assesses the threat of long-range missile strikes from the Russian Navy and the speed with which Russia is likely to resort to nuclear weapons. The publication notes that the maps were made more for presentation purposes than for operational use. They depict 32 NATO targets in Europe, the Baltic Fleet's targets are located mainly in Norway and Germany, including the naval base in Bergen, as well as radar stations and special forces facilities. The Northern Fleet is expected to hit defense industry sites such as the submarine yard at Barrow in Furness. In Northwest Britain. At the same time, former NATO official William Alberk, 
who now works at the Stimson Center, said that this sample is only a small part of the hundreds, if not thousands, of targets mapped across Europe. Russia's ability to strike across Europe means targets across the continent will be at risk once the Russian military engages NATO forces in the Baltics and Poland, analysts and former military officials say. Their concept of war is total war. They see these things as potentially victorious weapons. They will want to use them, and they will want to use them fairly quickly, said Jeffrey Lewis, a professor at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies in Monterey. Tactical nuclear weapons have a shorter range and are less destructive than the large strategic ones intended to attack the United States. However, they can still release significantly more energy than those dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in 1945.